So the, the actual slip is in the tub here. That's just our clay cob, so that's sand and clay mixed in with water to be a, a soupy mix. If you have a look there, you can see it's just like a, a thick uh, whipped cream, I suppose. Then we just mix the straw in with that. It won't matter having that left over either because we can just put, they can put some more clay in and get their cob going again. Now here, it's to, to get it so that it's um, just all the straw coated in the cob really, but not, uh, is not really dense. It's nice to have it sort of teased out a little bit so that it's a lot, of, you want a lot of air and straw, that's what gives you the insulation. Place the insulation mix onto the oven to form an even layer all the way around. So that's what it is really, a, a straw jumper. So it, uh, that's the, you can see that's the denser cob there in the middle. And it's all the same material except this is the, what we call uh, light straw. So it's straw mixed in with uh, the cob mixed into it like a soup. And then we just put it over it and then we'll, if we want to, we'll, we'll, we will here. I've seen people leave it and it looks like a woolly mammoth. But it goes quite hard, it's almost like a sparrow's nest or something. And very strong. And um, they've got enough clay in it so that it doesn't burn. And especially when you can't get oxygen to it with the other coat of plaster over it. So yes, well this, this layer underneath, that's the core of the oven. That stores the heat from the fire. And this one keeps it in and insulates it. So we fire the oven through here. And we've got the door we put in the different positions depending on where we want the, uh, how much air we want to get in. Or we can close it right up if we want to and block the bottom of the door there and it doesn't get any air. So depending on uh, how much, how big the fire we want or whether we want just to have it idling or if we take the fire right out and then we can load it up with cooking bread or roasts and um, just close the door and leave it there. The insulation coat or the woolly mammoth coat should be left to dry for a couple of days before you start to take the sand out. After you have waited a couple of days, you can begin to slowly take out the sand. To do this, remove the oven front door and remove a small amount of sand, no more than one quarter of what's inside. You need to start a small fire in the arch. Then leave the oven to continue drying for another 24 to 48 hours before you remove any more sand. If the cob inside the oven feels relatively dry to touch after this 24 to 48 hour period, you can start removing more sand and you need to also light small fires inside each day until all of the sand is removed and the inside of the oven is completely dry to touch. This process should take approximately one week. Do not place the door on the oven when a fire is lit until there is no sand in the oven and it is completely dry. Once all of the sand is removed, continue to light small fires in the oven every day for an additional week. After this week, your oven should be ready to cook with. So two weeks after the application of the insulation or woolly mammoth coat, the oven should be ready to use. The finished coat should only be applied five to six weeks after all of the sand has been removed from the oven.